Not too long ago, women's unmentionables were, well, unmentioned. New forms are designed in two lengths, regular and short. So you need never complain about a new form slip showing beneath your dress. Back then, there were only a few styles to pick from, and the stuff in department stores was frilly, floral, or just plain boring. That was until... I like strapless. Yeah, maybe a bandeau. A little off the shoulder. Super comfy. Since it was founded in the late 1970s, Victoria's Secret has transformed the way women wear underwear and even how we talk about it. But beyond those teeny-weeny bikinis lie a whole lot of secrets you might not know. Awkward. There wouldn't be a Victoria's Secret if it weren't for one devoted husband. According to the Daily Mail, Roy Raymond, a California-based entrepreneur with an MBA from Stanford University, came up with the original concept. In 2012, Roy's wife Gay told the Daily Mail, Our original idea was to have a store where men felt comfortable shopping for lingerie. It all began when Roy went shopping for me and felt out of place in a lingerie store. Spit nipply out. I mean nippy out. <laughs> what did I say? Nipple? <laughs> Uh, there is a nip in the air, though. Can I take something out for you? Roy hated the floral print nightgowns, the fluorescent lights, and the judgy looks of the saleswomen. So instead of leaving with a sexy teddy, he walked away with a great idea. A sensual store where men can buy lingerie for the women in their lives. Retail Sex Appeal Roy began to flesh out the details of his innovative new enterprise, choosing the name Victoria's Secret from the idea that even respectable women of the Victorian era had their secrets. <clears throat> his wife Gay recalled, The Victoria's Secret we founded was an upscale, sophisticated lingerie store that I designed to look like a Victorian drawing room, complete with oriental rugs and antique armoires displaying the wares. I remember making the velvet curtains for the first changing rooms. We used a lot of silk and natural fibers in our lingerie, and it was very high quality. Gracious! Decor Dis When the original location opened its doors in 1977, it was an automatic hit. But its decor left much to be desired. The eventual owner of Victoria's Secret, Les Wexner, said, It was a small store and it was Victorian. Not English Victorian, but brothel Victorian with red velvet sofas. Despite the tacky decor, Wexner saw potential. A very successful Ohio businessman, Wexner already owned the Limited and would later add Express, Lane Bryant, Bath & Body Works, and Limited 2 to his retail empire. Wexner added, There was very sexy lingerie, and I hadn't seen anything like it in the US. I saw ingredients in it. What if we mixed it up differently? Sexy and I know it. The business nearly bombs. Roy Raymond met Wexner during the 70s. During that time, the two became friends. And when Victoria's Secret began to flounder in 1982, Roy called Wexner in to help. Though Vicky's was making more than $4 million in annual sales, the business was on the brink of bankruptcy. So Wexner bought the entire business for $1 million. Bucks. Bras for men? Under Roy's leadership, Victoria's Secret was geared toward men feeling comfortable about buying women's lingerie. But Wexner soon found out that by making men more comfy, women were left out. From the first time I laid eyes on a brassiere, I was enthralled. <laughs> Wexner said, Most of the women that I knew would rather wear lingerie, but there were no lingerie stores. I thought if we could develop price points and products that have a broader base of customer, it could be something big. What? What's that smell? A cologne? No. Opportunity. No, money. Victoria who? Wexner's next move was to put a face to the Victoria name. According to the book Trading Up, Why Consumers Want New Luxury Goods and How Companies Create Them, Wexner created a backstory for the brand's fictitious founder. Victoria was an English-French model who was sophisticated and sexy. She started selling sensual undergarments on Sloan Street in London, an exclusive shopping area known for high-end fashions. Wexner described, It was like the making of a movie or telling a story to children. The story was so believable and engaging that our marketing people, merchandising people, store people, and store designers could get involved in it and tell it themselves. Yes, go ahead. Oh. Um. Well. Yeah, they're real. 
Told ya. Different kind of bombshell. As the myth of Victoria grew, original founder Roy Raymond lost his identity. He used the money from selling Vickies to start a new children's store, but it went bankrupt. Because Roy tangled his personal finances and business finances, he and his wife also lost two homes and a car. His wife Gay said, He went through a couple of business failures and I think he suffered depression. He borrowed a lot of money from his mother. He was trying to start another company, but things didn't go well and he saw only one way out. Shortly after divorcing Gay in 1993, Roy jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge, leaving behind two children. Total Transformation The same year Roy took his own life, Victoria's Secret was becoming the number one lingerie retailer in America. But despite its monumental success, Roy and Gay felt the brand had strayed from their original intentions. Gay said, It's no longer high-end fashion focused on fit, quality, and fiber, but it's now more popular with a lower price and aimed at a far younger crowd. Roy and I used to have our regrets about how much it had changed from our original vision. Yet they've done a great job making it a commercial success. Tricky Minx While Victoria's Secret may no longer feature a brothel-like decor, some things haven't changed. The shopping experience is still kinda geared toward men. According to a 2014 Business Insider report, employees are trained to treat male customers with a little more special attention. But don't take it personally, ladies. An anonymous employee claimed that they do this to get men to buy more. The worker continued, saying, Men would buy anything in order to get out of the store as quickly as possible. That means they would spend more money. Women are more value-oriented, and so we show them deals. Men would buy a couple of $50 bras without questioning us because they felt awkward. How much you want? How much you got? $400. Give me all of it. Redefining sexy. Though Victoria's Secret has a stronghold on the women's lingerie market, 35% in 2014, the company has faced some challenges. At the company's annual meeting in 2016, Wexner said, Results weren't to expectations. I know I'm a hard grader. As good as the performance was, I thought Victoria's Secret was stalling out. Wexner cut jobs and discontinued their clothing lines, a swimsuit line, and much of their online shoe retail. Now the company is shifting focus to lingerie, beauty, and its pink line. As women are moving away from the push-up bra for more natural silhouettes, Victoria's Secret continues to reinvent its brand, with new and creative ways for women to define their sexy. Thanks for watching! Click the list icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out this other cool stuff we know you'll love too!